Hello everyone, Chief Canuck here breaking down the latest Hunt the Truth episode, episode 4, Crossing the Black. The episode begins right after episode 3 with Thomas Wu asking Ben to leave him alone and promptly hanging up. Ben then realizes that conversation was over Waypoint and not through Chatternet, which provides some privacy from the government, but it's not foolproof. Waypoint apparently has only software capable of listening galaxy-wide and flagging conversations if you say the wrong thing. What I had just done was conduct an unsanctioned follow-up interview with a survivor of a war camp, accused him of lying about it, basically got him to admit that lie, and then ended by possibly implicating my employer, the most powerful military agency in history, in either bribery or coercion. Ben then calls Mashak Mirardi the conspiracy theorist. Mashak is a little special to say the least. He's a total nut job, but he does have some valid points. Relax, we are under the tinfoil hat of secrecy. <laughs> Seriously though, we are fully secured. There's lots of unsecured chatter going on with thin military personnel due to frustration. Soldiers are unhappy. Men at arms are apparently up in arms. Ben asks why there's so much discontent, and Mishak replies, Master Chief. He's off the grid being creative. Oni is pretending to know where he is, but they don't, and everyone's getting frustrated. People are beginning to question Master Chief's motivations and allegiances, calling him a traitor. The Master Chief is responsible for protecting the galaxy. That's a lot of power and responsibility for one man. Mashak sent this photo to Ben of graffiti over recruitment posters. Relationships between ODSTs and Spartans have always been shaky, but this is different with the words freak and traitor plastered on. Mashak went on and said something else is happening in deep space. Something bad is happening. There's something else afoot, Benjamin. I'm here in deep space. I'd hoped these events would turn out to be random, but now it's... It could be bad. Electromagnetic fluctuations, uh, uh, slip spacious disruption, uh, epidemic data corruption, all of it. I mean, you know, what's happening? It's quiet, it's light, but it's affecting everything. Ripples on a gigantic scale. I'm talking whole star systems. It's just, I don't want to say I'm frightened. <laughs> you know what I mean? Ben then received a notification from Sully, an event on a calendar with no message. Ben was being called back to Oni's office in Boston on Earth. He had never been called in before. Ben promptly said goodbye and ended his conversation with Mashak Mirardi. It seems that Oni may have flagged his conversation with Thomas Wu. Before meeting with Sully, Ben met with Petra Janicek, a fellow freelance war journalist. She and Ben basically make the government look good. Ben had last seen her six years ago during the event on New Mombasa. They both saw the chief during the events of Halo 2. After those events in New Mombasa, Ben retreated to a quiet location across the galaxy, and Petra stuck around and made a name for herself. She became critically acclaimed for her coverage of the Spartan 2 program and the events of New Mombasa. She knew Ben got the Master Chief assignment and she was jealous. She even mocked the idea of Sully assigning something, joking around that it's probably an only one sheet of pre-approved sources, which was sadly true. She then asked why Ben was back on Earth. Ben then brings her up to speed. She told her he was called in by Sully, talked about the Thomas Wu conversation and how it took place over Waypoint, she was unimpressed by this, and the conflicting stories from the sources provided by Oni and the ones found by Ben himself. Petra was surprised that Ben made sources and contacts in the outer colonies, as Petra bluntly tells us that Ben basically became a nobody after the events in New Mombasa. He wasn't a government lapdog anymore, nor was he even a big name journalist anymore. Her impression was that Ben was probably chosen because he became a nobody by moving into deep space, and that Sully was basically giving Ben the opportunity of a lifetime to bring back his career into the limelight, possibly suggesting that Sully was hopeful that Ben would just be grateful enough to have a, such a huge opportunity and blindly follow orders and instructions. Ben begins to get heated and rant about his findings. No, seriously, this is big. I can't even begin to reconcile the things I'm hearing with the story I'm supposed to tell. Multiple sources that Chief died at six, complete mm -hmm. fabrications, mm -hmm. genetically augmenting kids. I know, they are crazy charging that much for a shore trip. Suddenly, I mean, Petra was ranting about the beach, loudly, and digging her fingertip hard into my forearm. I just sat there, totally confused, as she rambled nonsense, intermittently glancing down at her com pad. What was happening? There and negotiate a better rate. Because seriously, then I understood, about all the money you could have saved, really and I froze. Oni was listening. Apparently Oni's ears are only on people from time to time, but Oni's eyes are always on them. They begin to listen based off people's actions, which is what tipped them off when Ben started getting heated. Petra's fake conversation just saved them. 
Petra says that Ben's out of touch and that he should do exactly what he's told. Just take the money and do the job and stop questioning everything. But she did warn him to back up and upload everything he has right now before going in. As Ben was transferring his files to Ray Kurzig, mentioned in episode 3, he noticed something strange about the Yoni campus. The inner side of the sidewalk was black obsidian. It surrounded the whole complex. There were no fences, no guards, no birds, no sounds in the air. And despite all the pedestrian action, no one stepped foot on the black half of the sidewalk. They were basically walking on the curb. Just as the episode ends, Ben finished transferring the files on over to Ray and crossed the black line onto the Oni campus. Now this episode was definitely meant to build up suspense. The idea that Master Chief is a traitor is resonating throughout the military and the ODSTs. Do you think the conversation was flagged by Oni? And what do you think will happen next to Ben? Share your thoughts down below in the comment section, I look forward to reading them. And with that, that's my breakdown of the latest episode of The Hunt for the Truth. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the latest and more awesome Halo news and content. My name's Chief Canuck and I'm signing out.